design is not centered around the designing of objects or graphics or buildings or clothing, um, but it's really about the design of systems and um, things like taxation structures, public policy, even waste and um, recycling um, systems are all things that are designed and it's, it's that type of design that uh, most interests me and I've been most engaged with. Um, I also strongly believe that design by a single creative person working in isolation is rarely going to produce the kind of success to a project that a genuinely participatory approach or collaborative and evolutionary approach to design will do. And when I joined Digital Eskimo four years ago, I found that their philosophy and their approach to design fitted in really well with mine. It's said that the road to hell is paved with good intentions and um, there are countless examples of projects and policies that are designed with the highest possible aims um, that do significant damage to the people that they're intended to benefit. So I think a really important element of design practice can be um, drawn from um, Hippocrates and his approach uh, for medical practitioners. And it just starts off with, it says, first, do no harm. And um, on a modern company level, this is probably well mirrored in um, Google's motto, which is don't be evil, whether you think they are or not. But at Digital Eskimo, we have very lofty ambitions for our own social and environmental impact. Our own mission is to use design to create a sustainable society. And there are several ways uh, we seek to achieve this, but the main one, um, the main way that we do this is the filter that we use when we're considering whether or not we're doing projects on or not. Uh, it's taken from a model of an ethical investment and broadly puts uh, potential projects on a scale of evil to good, and they sit within three broad categories. So I think, first of all, the fundamental tenet of being a designer for good is a not being bad. Um, another one is collaborative design. So, as I said, designing in isolation, relying on a genius creative model of design, is quite risky. Um, no one person, especially a person who is not a stakeholder in a project, is likely to be able to design great solutions more than maybe 20% of the time. That's off the top of my head, but that would be my guess. Um, people coming in and making decisions based on assumptions or at best superficial understandings of situations are going to continue to make mistake after mistake. I remember hearing about a rural water project when I was studying development. Um, and a pipe was built to connect water to a village where women had previously had to walk several kilometres several times a day to retrieve water um, for, the, for the, use, uh, the use in the village. And um, this agency came in and they built this pipe and connected it up. They were very pleased with their work and seemingly rightly so, but when they came back to um, the village six months later, they came to find that the, the pipe had been dug up and the um, pipe, the materials used had been repurposed for something else. And they were shocked at this. They couldn't understand why their fantastic solution um, had been you know, deliberately um, ruined by the, the locals. But they came and brought it to what they thought was a good solution. But they really didn't understand the social dynamics involved in that village and um, the men's attitude to what they saw as the duty of women in that, in that village. And so um, uh, they refused to use it and um, ended up taking it out. And, so again, really good aims, um, great intentions, terrible result. And so again, you know, designing in collaboration is, is a really essential um, uh, part of designing um, for good and designing with uh, good outcomes rather than average or terrible ones. So just on a couple of projects that you have done, I'm going to focus on two that we've actually uh, really done ourselves. Um, uh, these are ones that uh, we hope will have great um, social and environmental benefit. Uh, the first one is Live Local, which is this one here. Um, this is just a, a screenshot from the, from the site. Um, it was a project that was born out of um, a brief that was uh, given to us by um, uh, an individual by called Piers Dawson. He was really concerned about peak oil, which is basically when supply of oil um, is massively outstripped by demand for oil, and um, it's inevitable and potentially really catastrophic uh, impacts. 
And you know, it's a real doom and gloom sort of project potentially. And uh, you know, it seemed to be uh, likely to mirror a lot of what was going on with the climate change debate. And we saw, you know, not a lot of movement there after many, many years, a lot of effort and billions of dollars spent on trying to change people's um, approach to, to greenhouse gas emissions. We thought, you know, we will we'll easily be able to work out the budget, um, this, all, this, all the money this guy's got to spend with no real um, great result. Really, I'm not going to put a dent in it. But um, we're, what we came up with um, was um, informed by three key insights from the research we did is, first of all, that most people are passively concerned about environmental problems. Most people care about the community. And most things that you do to help your local neighbourhood will help the environment as well and also build social resilience. And so the solution we came to from the brief is actually, rather than debating the ins and outs of peak oil, is to avoid that question altogether and go to the solution to peak oil, which is really local living. Um, we were inspired by um, the, the transformation in Cuba after the Iron Curtain fell and they lost all their trading partners and basically had to become uh, self-sufficient in oil or redesign their systems to not rely on it. Uh, within literally a matter of weeks or months. And they did that relatively successfully, but that's because of the, the social infrastructure that existed at the time. And so we, um, we believe that um, encouraging people to experiment in local living was um, a way to move, move towards that, that capacity. Another one is uh, do good up. And this is a fresh out of the box. Um, this is get up, as you can see. But, um, do Gooder was launched about a week and a half ago, and um, basically what Do Gooder is, um, I'm hoping you're familiar with uh, GetUp and what it is and what it does. Um, uh, basically, this is the, the screenshot from their site uh, the other day. You know, they've got over 500,000 people who have signed up, and they do a whole bunch of um, campaigns around all manner of social and environmental um, uh, actions. And they use uh, an incredibly large and strong network um, uh, to and, and engage them with whatever it is. And they use uh, online tools um, and emails um, to do that. But what uh, Do Gooder is, uh, is uh, it enables everyone to be their own getter. So basically, we have over the years done a lot of activist work. Um, Digital SMO is really born from um, a spirit of activism, and we work with Greenpeace and um, uh, Amnesty, Australia, Amnesty uh, International, sorry, um, and the Greens, and all sorts of um, organisations doing uh, campaign work. And um, one of the, the highest profile successes that we had was we did the, the website and online strategy for the ACTU for their Your Rights at Work campaign. We built a whole bunch of tools um, that encouraged and enabled actions for people all around the country. And uh, you know uh, that that campaign, you know, the digital have played a part in it. But it was a massive um, nationwide campaign, which was a significant uh, reason that there was a change of government back in 2007. But we saw the opportunity for those tools not just to be used by one client who pays for them. Um, and this is a common thing: is the tools get rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt um, because the same needs exist in campaigning. So what we've done is designed and built um, uh, uh, a service where you can subscribe and create your own campaigns online. Um, so it has several tools and it will have um, many more um, as we further develop them. But basically, uh, a simple example is, and a really effective one, um, in any campaign is getting people to contact their local politicians um, about an issue of policy. So what you can do on this tool is um, basically create um, uh, an action, you distribute it to your own networks, um, they go onto the, this site, which has your own campaign um, page that you've created. Um, it will give you the contact details for your local MP, it will give you some talking points, it will enable you to email through that system. Um, and so it encourages uh, um, people to contact, whether by email, phone, or whatever. Um, they're local MP to express an opinion about whatever it is that you're trying to campaign about. 
So this is another feature campaign that we're working for at the moment. So this is about um, coal seam gas exploration and development in the Liverpool Plains, which is um, Australia's um, most productive farm land. And as you can see here, just gives you a bit of information about uh, the campaign. You just chuck in your postcode and uh, the software will do the, the finding for you. It'll encourage you to um, ring them, give you some talking points to talk through and express your opinion and be very straightforward. And then you just um, it enables you to say, yep, this is, this is, I did this, so it records your actions. And then um, encourages you to tell your friends about it and get them to um, to do the same. And so from you know, one activist's networks, it can reach all their networks' networks and um, become incredibly effective. So yeah, so these are two projects that we've done. Um, this one was um, entirely self-funded, um, but you know all the other work that we uh, that we do um, for commercial clients again. We really seek to use that um, collaboration, participatory uh, approach to um, designing for them, designing for the users, and um, ensuring that um, yeah, the, the outcomes are actually beneficial and positive, and as you have designed it, um, rather than uh, just executing what you think is a great idea um, in a moment of clarity. So. Thank you very much for your time.